There is a big split in the form of the provinces over the first couple of weeks with Munster and Connacht massively struggling and Leinster and Ulster setting us up for a cracking game tomorrow night up in Belfast with two relatively straightforward victories. Uh, Munster are the main talking point at the moment. So beaten by Dragons at the weekend after an opening day defeat to Cardiff. But the weekend at the defeat the defeat of the weekend was particularly galling. Like Dragons didn't win a single home game last season, seven years since they'd beaten Munster. It is only two games into that new coaching ticket of Roundtree, Prendergast and Leamy. Are these teething problems a reflection of a greater malaise that have set in, or is it just a couple of games at the start of a new era and these things can happen? Um, I, th- I think it's probably a bit of both, to be honest with you. I think... If you were a Munster supporter, I, I, I guess I'm always mindful of not being overly critical this early on in the season because there's always teething problems and every new coaching ticket does need a betting in period. But I suppose all you're looking for, for are green shoots. You're looking for something to latch on to, you know, some scope of a pattern or, you know, or player development that has been worked over the course of the preseason. But genuinely, Rome wasn't built in a day. And I do think with every new coaching ticket, they have to be given more time than than the public is willing to to do. You know there is an expectation and a, and 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 maybe an expectation that's lived too long from from a, um, a monster kind of hope and and you know and, and based on previous experience a decade since a trophy we haven't we, yeah we haven't seen the the glory years for a long time and why all of a sudden with new coaching ticket, with much the same personnel, should you expect wholesale change to what they're delivering? Um, so I, I am mindful of being critical at this time. There, there's some things that must very, really frustrate the coaching ticket on the base of what I saw at the weekend. Very poor discipline, um, unforced errors, um, you know, questionable skill level. Some of the passes, there must have been three or four long, you know, windy and passes from skillful backs that were a meter, two meters forward. Um, you know, I know they're trying to play to the width, but the, it's just there's too many errors from any professional team's perspective. Um, irres- you know, without taking into account what their shape looked like, what their um, what their detail looked like, I just think you're on, on hiding if you're going to deliver those sort of unforced errors and, and and mistakes that are just going to give access to any opposition into a, into a game. Generally, Brian, when you talk about those errors and like 64 mixed tackles in the first two matches, like 13, 13 handling errors in the last game, eight turnovers in the first half alone, from your experience, when it is such a, it feels like total systems failure, is that is that a fitness thing, a confidence thing, a, a tactical thing? From what you saw of them in those first couple of games, what are you putting those errors down to? Is it a quality um, thing? I think I think yeah, there, there's definitely a quality thing. That's not change. If you get, if you if you remember, it's not like they brought in eight or ten new players. Like the reality is that it it's it's not the I, we always go back to it's not the Paul O'Connells and the you know the John Hayes and the Dave, you know Dennis Leamy's and David Wallace and Alan Quinlan and Anthony Phone. Like these were all really really high quality and many of them international high quality players. You, you don't have that in the monster setup at the moment. You just don't. And we've we've got to, you know, accept that that is the case right now and that you you live in hope that, you know, the, the academy players that are coming through are going to turn into some of the, that type of quality of, of player. But for now, if you look at first 15s and the individuals that are involved in them, we've said this for a number of years, the fun five in particular, you know, you take... Um, you take Ty Byrne out of that front five, I, I, you know that you're you're not going to you know, give anyone sleepless nights on on some of the individuals in there. And on their day, very capable players. You know, Kilcoyne, great ball carrier. But even watching him at, at the weekend, and I think he's in danger of doing himself a little bit of of uh, of danger in, in selection for the World Cup squad because he's a good ball carrier. But so much of his decision making now comes to carrying when the option might be elsewhere because I don't know how comfortable he is getting into that fir- that role as a first receiver and pulling the ball out the back. He looked totally um, um, 
uneasy. Um, once where he had to do it, pivoted it through the ball on the ground. Some players just look way more natural. And even in Archer's case, he looks far more natural. He can and throw the blind pass. And if you're looking at trying to get yourself into Andy Farrell's squad, the way they're trying to play, well, you're going to really have to work on, on that aspect. Um, Scannell, likewise, you look at the dynamism of all of the other hookers, you know, the two at Leinster, you look at Tom Stewart um, at the weekend, uh, in the Connacht game, you know, looks really impressive, ball carrying ability, footwork. I think Scannell is kind of of the old school hooker mold. So he's going to have to change up his game a little bit. John Klein, maybe I've been critical of him in the past. You know, he you know, had a bit of a head knock um, and, he, and he'll do a job for you. But again, I don't think you're going to scare anyone. Maybe it'll do a job at URC level. But when it comes to uh, European level, you know, you look at the international caliber and the best teams, they will they, they will feel as though they'll comfortably have the better of some of those individuals. And that hasn't changed. Are you really surprised then that they let the likes of John Ryan and Jason Jenkins leave during the summer? When you look at what happened, what's happening with you know with um, Cronin as well over in Leicester. I've watched a little bit of him over the um, over the start of the season. He's flying for um, for Le- for for Leicester. Um, you look at John Ryan. You know, you let them go. Maybe John Ryan. It's John Ryan's decision as well. You know. He, he, all of a sudden you're looking at guys that realize they're probably out of the, the international pecking order. They're looking for bigger paydays, looking for a new opportunity, a new lease of life, maybe. Um, so so now all of a sudden you're not being able to hold on to the players that you couldn't even hold on to a coach they'd given a new contract or two. So as though there, there's just been a shift um, in ability to maintain the Munster aura and I and I still think they are capable of those big one-off performances and get themselves emotionally hyped for it but I think consistently getting to that next level where we've become used to them managing to get over the course of the noughties delivering time and time again I just don't know if they are that side anymore based on the personnel based on the skill level and now you know based on the new coaching ticket coming in without being able to properly stamp their authority in what way they want to play the game so there's i do think there's multiple factors you know working their their way that said i do think if you look at the moments where they they did do something good and and, and one stood out and, and you look at the personnel that were involved in it where zebo got high tackled it was the yellow card they scored the try straight afterwards their their phase set up Peter O'Mahony was the ball carrier. Ty Byrne was the one running the short line. Um, and, and all of a sudden you're um you're drawing in defenders and Healy goes into the space to be able to, you know, throw the ball out to, to, to Zebo. They're the small things. The personnel know what they're doing there. So what they need to do is they need time with the team to go away, talk through to, you know, to the academy players, to the peripheral players, and get them understanding what the expectation is on lines of running. I think their timing was way off. And as a result, they weren't fixing any of the Dragons' defence and it was bread and butter to them. It, you mentioned O'Mahony and Byrne in that phase of play. Like That touches on Donico Callahan's criticism after the match on this huge gap, it seems, in leadership, that we're still talking about the same players when it comes to Munster as that leadership group. And the next level, the 24, 25-year-olds who are coming up, when O'Mahony's not there, when Burns not there, nobody seems to fill their boots. Whereas on Leinster, it seems from Lancaster in particular, they've put such a focus on leadership with every stage. So the URC team, there are players there when Sexton isn't involved, when Van der Fleer isn't there, that will step up. Like that's, that's the culture side of it for Munster, that Roundtree really needs to get to grips with very quickly. Uh, but but also, that's why I said you've, you've got to give someone a couple of years at that. You know, you can't expect miracles this year. You know, a coach coming in as, as an assistant to Johan van Graan, there's only so much of a voice you can have. You've got to follow suit of what the head coach wants to do. And yes, in private meetings with them, you can put your point across, but you have to show unity, even if you don't fully endorse or back what the coach is doing they're the head coach you're the assistant coach he's in a very different role this time around now he's the head coach and he's going to be working with um with prendy um at, you know as a, as a tax coach um you know and 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 their cohesion is going to take 
you're not you can't just get it done in a preseason. It's going to take a number of months. It might take the full year for them to understand what they're trying to do, what way they want to change the game, and what players they have at their disposal to be able to do that. We know as well, internationals are going to be taken out at certain times. So they're going to have to give the trust and the confidence into some of those academy players that maybe aren't quite to the same standard of what Leinster have in their reserves. But you're going to have to work with what you've got and and make the most of it. But there are some very talented young guys coming through Munster as well. And they just have to you know, give them game time, give them an ability to make mistakes and learn um, as a result of it. And, and they will be better for it. But it, I don't think it'll be all of a sudden the expectation should be for there to be you know, disappointment on what Van Graan did over the course of three or four years. And then all of a sudden you're you're just topping up on on. The good work and not and not the bad stuff. I think you're starting afresh. You're building new foundations. You're building a new shape and a new game plan, a new confidence within the team, and that will take time. And everything needs to build into that. It's interesting. We were talking to Shane Daly on the show last week, and he was talking about his role as somebody who played across the back three for Munster over the last couple of years. And Johan Van Grand didn't make a whole lot of use of them, but Mike Prendergast's game plan is going to be very different. So suddenly he's going to have ball in hand an awful lot more than he had over the last three or four years. And I presume that's not just in the 80 minutes of the match. That's on the training ground as well. So yeah. that's a pretty seismic shift in what a lot of these young players, and for them, Johan van Grand's style is all they know. Yeah, it is. And, um, and, and, you know, there's a big, uh, there's always a big kicking influence to the South African game. It's what they're, what they've been brought up on. And so sometimes as an outside back, when you don't get a lot of touches, it's pretty frustrating just chasing kicks, you know, be it box kicks or, or, you know, long kicks for territory, you know, you'll do, you'll do that because it's part of being a you know a good team player, but it, it can be very frustrating as, as an outside back, you want the ball in your hands, your ability to, to get as many touches as you can showcase, you know, what you're capable of your skill set, your ability to beat players one-on-one, -on -one, your speed and agility, all those factors are what outside backs thrive on. No, no outside back wants to chase kicks all day. They just don't. Um, so, uh, giving them a, a, a license to be able to play a little bit wider, it'll take some time to really get an understanding as to what that looks like. You know, they, they're trying to do it, obviously, with some of those long passes, just a real inaccuracy. And once or twice they, had, they got, you know, they they got a great yardage on the back of, you know, one or two of Healy's really good passes out to Zebo right in front of and all of a sudden you're 10, 20 yards in behind teams. And, and that is great. But you can't have one of those and and you know two forward passes that that got called back for a scrum and all of a sudden you're pinned back into your own you know your own twenty two on the back of that uh, of unforced errors that you just can't you have, you have to build strategy and confidence on low risk rugby and low error rugby that is a way to get yourself into um, into a better spot and, and get the whole squad feeling as though they're going in the right direction. When you're stop start and you're trying to pull a rabbit out of a hat and all of a sudden it's, it's, it's not going anywhere, that does nothing for the confidence levels of the new guys and the, and the peripheral guys. International guys will be fine, but everybody else is going to feel, God, are we going the right way? Is this the right tack that we need to be taking? Do we need to cut our cloth and go back to what we know and, and, and feel we're good at? Ben Healy was one of the few bright spots at the weekend. We spend a lot of time talking about Carberry putting pressure on Sexton for Ireland. Do you see Healy putting pressure on Carberry this season for Munster? Yeah, I think so. I, I like Healy as a player. I think he's a nice player. I think he plays with a swagger. And, um, you know, he he plays pretty direct to the line, maybe not as good uh, as well as as the best guys. He's got a good passing game, and that's why I'm able to pick out, you know, the couple of errors that he made on the long passes. I think he has a really good passing game in general. He's got a huge boot as well. So I, I do like him as, as a player, and I think he should absolutely be earmarking um, putting proper pressure on, on Joey this year. I'm sure he'll have learned a lot. I saw his interview in the Sunday Times last weekend talk about, you know, his misses and, and just, you know, having an ability to park them. He seems like the sort of individual that's capable of doing that, that won't carry that as baggage. And, and you want that in your player. You want someone that is playing with big confidence, that really backs themselves, but now he has to deliver that. Um, and it's, it's most important of all players that your out half is a low error guy, that he does the simple things well, but when he does decide to you know, pull out a little bit of magic or throw that long pass, that it's accurate and that it stays in hand. Um, so, you know, his try that he scored at the weekend, lovely little, you know, um, 
kind of hover in behind the mall. It was uh, on the on the driven line out, uh, and really nice from Kate, Kate, Craig Casey, the delayed pass. But that stuff is brilliant. It, it, there's no doubt he's got that running game in him. Um, he just needs to kind of reduce the errors to 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 make sure that everyone around him goes okay. He's he's the point of difference that we have. He's the security guy. You know, let's play with him.